This question comes from Jacob Sandok, and he asks, How does one studying a rigidly unflexible and etiquette-laden martial system reconcile staying blindly true and singularly loyal to an archaic art, developed under totally different social and industrial environs, with staying current and safe, able to respond and adapt loosely and calmly without preconceived notions? This is a very important and also pointed question. So clearly Jacob had some experience in the past with this, where perhaps he has seen someone else he knows struggle with this matter, because it is clearly something that's emotional for him. And I think a lot of traditional, traditionalists feel that as well. A lot of times you can get caught up in the etiquette and manners, as well as the forms and basics and all the accoutrement that come with being a traditional stylist. And a lot of times you can become so focused on that, especially if ranking is involved, that you can forget altogether how in any way this stuff can be effective. And so my first little tidbit, uh, jumping into this topic, is to say, you have to break through the traditional and get to the classical. So, when we think of traditional, we often think of, uh, you know, perhaps the modern schools that are one particular rue or style. You might also consider the wartime clans of ancient Japan who would purposefully keep secrets hidden from one another so that their techniques would be more effective on the battlefield or perhaps in a duel where one cut could mean life or death. Now, of course, that's less relevant these days, which is perhaps what the questioner is alluding to. Interestingly, if you look back in the history of other styles, you don't see the same exclusionary tactics. So take karate, for example. We look at some of the individuals who are considered the forefathers. Chosen Shibana, for one. Aizo Shimabukuro, another. And Aizo Shimabukuro is still alive, by the way. And the founder of my style, Shigeru Nakamura, as another. All of these individuals were known for collaboration. They were great friends with other martial artists in their own individual times and, you know, peer groups. So, my instructor, Shigeru Nakamura, visited Aizo Shimabukuro on multiple occasions. He was great friends with Zenryo Shimabukuro, and in fact, they created an organization for karate study. That's how the name of my style came about, Okinawa Kempo. It just means the fighting arts of Okinawa, of Ryukyu. It was not supposed to be the name of a, of a particular style. It was supposed to be an umbrella name that all the different karateka used in order to come together and talk to each other and hang out and learn. Ultimately, the Ren, Okinawa Kempo Renmei was formed, and the karate that people used to study under Nakamura became known as Okinawa Kempo. And so in time, it became a style of its own. However, that was not the original intent. It just sort of happened that way. The funny thing about all these old collaborations is that these instructors knew that the more new, fresh information that they could bring into their study, the better they would be off. But here's the thing. They only infuse their system and their information with other highly skilled and reputable martial artists. So they didn't just take from here, take from here, take from here, two months here, two months there. They would really study with other people that they knew had put in the dedication with real instructors before them. As they were gaining more information, they were also keeping their style true to what their teachers taught them. Because those textbooks, those ideas, needed to be handed down to the next generation. The ideas and concepts and enlightenment that they got from those forms and those methods needed to be passed on so that way other students could come up with their own forms not their own forms, but their own enlightenment, their own ideas, and extract what they can from it. So in that way, keeping things the same helped each individual in exploring it in their own way. Now the important part was having a knowledgeable teacher that could help you adapt and, and optimize the style and the martial art for you. So it was a matter of keeping certain things the same as a foundation and then building on top of that in an individualistic way so that your system and your style was as, eff as effective as possible. You also mentioned the environs of real combat. So there's a little bit of a misconception here. The environs of what a lot of traditional styles or classical styles were based on 
was life and death combat. And so from a civilian standpoint, Okinawan karate was extremely valuable. All they had was what was in front of them from a very base level. The same things they had are the same things we have. Hands, feet, and mind. So what they used to actually kill and to actually save life is what they passed down to us. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't kill people. So I get that information and that wisdom without actually having to go out and kill anyone. So it's not that what was seen before is no longer applicable to real modern day violence. What you can do is use your traditional art as a foundation and then build things like gun self-defense or use of a taser or use of pepper spray. Build on top of that because the concepts that make the mind sharp and the hands effective and the detection of certain cues that all of the old stylists used to key in on can very much translate into that modern stuff that we want to use. The trick is to not just pull a bunch of things that we see, slap it together and think that we've got a better foundation than has been hand down for hundreds or perhaps thousands of years. So again, I guess as a final thought, I want to say that being loyal to a style does not necessitate blindness. Although in a lot of, occasion, a lot of occasions those two things do seem to come together. Being loyal to a style means keeping it true to as it was passed down to you and being diligent in creating a full understanding of it within yourself. So improving your understanding is loyalty to your style. However, preserving it as it was taught to you is also loyalty. No blindness is needed. Observe other styles, learn from them, improve yourself. However, keep what you know as your core to be true.